Hey guys, for today's video, did my voice just crack? Oh my god. Hey guys, for today's video, I thought we could do another makeup artist series type of video. I had clients over the weekend and I was getting ready to put all my stuff away, clean my brushes, sanitize and everything. And I was thinking, why not film it and just kind of give you guys like tips and tricks on kind of how to do like proper sanitization. Hopefully it's proper. I mean, this is what I do. I'm super careful, very detailed about like just being very clean and making sure everything's hygienic so people don't get infections or styes or pink eye. Like that's so not cool. So I thought why not share it because this was definitely something that I struggled with in the beginning. I didn't know what to do. When I first started doing makeup, I spent all my money on investing in my kit. I basically just had one brush for like each part of the eye. So I didn't start off with like six different blending brushes if I had six people to do I could just pick up a clean brush I had a couple of eye brushes to start with a couple of face brushes to start with good for one person but not good for many people if you guys are beginner makeup artists or your makeup artist and you started like back in the day I'm sure you guys remember the struggle okay it was tough in the beginning I was able to find a few things online I was able to find a little bit on YouTube but there just wasn't a lot of information out there none of my friends do makeup I mean I've met people in the industry over the years but when I first started none of my friends did makeup I was the only one so I kind of had to like teach myself and I've learned along the way I've definitely picked up like little things here and there along the way that have just really helped me and I remember in the beginning I was just like everything has to be perfect I have to have this 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 and this and I'm gonna show you guys like everything you need, everything you don't need, things that I found just really helped me along the way and trust me, I remember stressing so much, especially because like I said, one of the biggest things for me was I was so worried about my brushes. Over time, I was able to build my brush collection, but in the beginning, I'm telling you, I had like one blush brush, one contour, one bronzer. I had like maybe two sponges and that was it and I just had to make it work. So this is what I learned over the years, trial and error, and I'm gonna share it with you guys right now. First what I do when I pack up my kit, um, it's gonna be kinda hard to see because it's right down here on the side. This is what holds all of my makeup. So I have my a specific case, like kit situation for my makeup, and then I also carry this little bag with me, and it's really heavy because I have a lot of shit in here, but it's just one of these like reusable, thin, like little cheapy bag. This is what I like to put all my cleaning stuff in towels supplies um, things that are just gonna help me work more efficiently this is what I keep all of this stuff in so I like to keep it separately because it's a lot whew, it's a lot easier for me to find so the first thing that I do when I go and set up everything I make sure I bring at least two or three towels with me so I have this towel it's an old towel nobody misses it because it's super old it has holes in it I don't care what happens to this towel. When I first get to my destination is I'll lay this towel out. This is gonna help act as number one, something that I can lay all my makeup on in case there's powder, something spills, a liquid foundation falls over. You have something that will clean up and you're not making a mess whenever you go to somebody's house to do their makeup or wherever you're going. So I'll lay this towel down, but this also acts as my um, brush cleaner. So if I need to clean a brush, if I need to uh, soak up excess from my beauty blender because it's wet, this is what I'll use. So I'll just lay this down and I'll put all my stuff on top of it. Like for me, for example, I'm a messy worker. I'm just going to say it. I work very artistically. I start off clean and organized and I end up with shit all over the place. That's just how I work. When I'm in the zone, I'm in the zone. So sometimes I have everything laid out nice and organized and then all of a sudden it's like I'm the fourth person in and I don't have time to go look for another blending brush. I see my Sigma E40 that I used on the person before and I'm like, you know what? Let me just clean this real quick. I'm not gonna go hunt for another blending brush because I just don't have time. You're pressed for time, you gotta go. Maybe you're working on a bride, you're running behind, people are running late, and you're just, you gotta get going. You don't have time to go hunt for other stuff because that's definitely me. I've been in that situation. So what I'll do, this is a random brush that I used on somebody over the weekend, it's dirty, so this is gonna be a perfect example. I use this brush cleaner. This is from Sephora. This is my favorite one. I've used others, but this one is my favorite. It dries like this. So I'll just take this brush, I'll do like a really nice, generous coating on the brush. And then you guys can't see, I'll go ahead and insert a clip right here from my iPhone so you guys are able to see. But I'll use the towel that I laid down and then I'll just clean the brush off, just like that. It's so fast, it literally takes no time whatsoever and the brush dries instantly. Especially if you're just starting off and you don't have multiples of brushes and you can't afford to spend four or five hundred dollars on brushes after you just invested all that money in your kit, tools, and your makeup. 
use the same brush until you're eventually able to build your collection. That's definitely what I did for a very long time. Okay, on top of that, now I always do this just because I'm a little extra cautious. I keep this little thing, this has alcohol in it. I got this in like the dollar section of Target or something. I'll just take this and I'll just spray on top of it. I always go very generous with the sprays. Do the same thing, rub it right on the towel and that's it. Give it like just a second. Like honestly, you could give this 10 seconds and it's already dry, like it's already dry right now. Yeah, completely dry. I also make sure to kind of get on the handle too. Now I will go in obviously when I'm done with all my clients and like deep clean my brushes with a brush cleanser, like with soap and water and stuff like that. Um, but I like to just kind of spray the handles as well just to be, you know, more sanitary. I'd rather be over sanitary than less sanitary. Let's move on to like tweezers and stuff like that. So for example, I have these tweezers. I have this lash curler that I used on somebody over the weekend. If you only have like one pair of tweezers, one lash curler, I do the same thing. I'd rather be like overly cautious than under cautious. I know this is for brushes, but I don't care. I just do it right on the tweezers. Now for stuff like this, like tools, like tweezers, lash curlers, you wanna make sure you clean the whole entire thing. And then I do the same thing. I take this and I like douse this bitch. I douse it just like that, do the same thing and wipe it off with the towel. Lash curler, um, I do the same thing. I'll just do like a spritz like that. I'm probably wasting the brush cleaner, but again, I don't care. I'd rather be overly cautious than under cautious. Alcohol, I get all up in this honey. There's a little piece of lash stuck to it because I'm a hot mess. And then I always take out this thing. I do the same thing for this. Now I do keep like multiple pairs of lashes, lash curlers and tweezers, but again, like if you're just beginning or like in the heat of the moment, you lose stuff and you're kind of like at the point where you like, you know, people need to get out the door. Um, you could just do this and it works just as well. Just really make sure to cover like the whole um, object and then just go in and clean it off, rub it down with a towel. I'll have all my brushes in something like this and say I wanna use like this brush right here. So I take this brush out. This is what I would do whenever um, I didn't have multiples of brushes and I needed to use the same brush on over and over on, this, on different people. I would take this brush, use it on someone, and then I would set it down right here in front of me. So all my clean brushes stayed in here. All my dirty brushes went here on the table in front of me. So I knew that when I went on to the next person, this brush was dirty and this was clean and I wasn't kind of all over the place of like looking for my dirty brushes and thinking did I use that brush on this girl do I need to clean it because then you're wasting your time and you're wasting your clients time so what I did is I would lay my dirty brushes here I'm waiting for the next person to come and sit in my chair I would clean my brushes super fast I'd spray them down clean them off throw them down just to like make sure everything was clean and sanitized for the next girl and they kind of had a second to dry while I was prepping her skin or like prepping her face with primer, her eyelids, doing her brows or something like that. By the time I went on to actually use my brushes, they were all like clean and 100% dry. That's just another little tip that I wanted to let you guys know. Now what I do is whenever I'm done with a dirty brush, like these are my dirty brushes from my client this weekend, I'll just take this thing with me. I used to take little Little, like makeup baggies with me but they would kind of get smushed in the bag I have this thing now and every time I'm done with a dirty brush I just throw it in here and I know that all my dirty brushes are in here it makes it easier for me when I get home and I need to deep clean my brushes and if I see like a loose brush somewhere or a straggler or like for example if something's like just sitting on top because sometimes when I'm cleaning up I'll just throw brushes on top of here since I don't have enough holes for all of these brushes and I'll just kind of roll it up I know that if I find a loose brush somewhere it's clean because I just automatically make sure that as soon as I'm done with a dirty brush I throw it in here take that to the sink and wash it as soon as I get home so it makes cleanup easier for me too if you're one who uses makeup sponges what I would recommend is that honestly I would say of anything you want to just go ahead and buy multiple sponges because brushes are super easy to clean sponges take a little bit of more time you got to get the soap up in there squeeze it out like 20 times wash it again make sure it's clean so what I would do is maybe buy something like the real technique sponges I love those sponges you could buy a two pack for 10 bucks um, sometimes they have them buy one get one half off at Ulta sometimes they're buy one get one free sometimes they even go on sale for like 40% the L'Oreal ones really great as well those are like five six bucks I think get a couple of those affordable ones and then instead of having to go and clean and wasting your time with your clients do you have the time to do that when you're like on a time crunch with a big group of people probably not so just go ahead and invest in a couple of more affordable sponges 
That way you don't have to worry about cleaning your sponges. Also keep in mind, you might be in a situation where you're not really able to go find a restroom and wet your sponge and look like just hope that wherever you're at has soap and water. You never know. This is another thing that I've just picked up like over the years. I always make sure that I bring like two or three water bottles with me because in the event that it might be a weird situation. I just did a photo shoot over the weekend. The bathrooms were out of order. There was a water fountain that I was able to use, but I was I remember thinking, well, this is a photo shoot. It's not like I'm going to somebody's house. We went to a studio to do makeup. So I made sure to bring a couple of bottles of water with me. So if push comes to shove, and for whatever reason, there isn't any way for me to wet my sponge, at least I have a couple of towels where I can hold the sponge over the towel and pour the water on top of the sponge just to make sure it's damp. So that's another thing to to keep in mind you might not be able to wash your sponge I would say in the beginning especially if you're a sponge user I would much rather have multiples of sponges than I would brushes in the beginning because this brush cleaner is gonna dry those brushes instantly it takes two seconds to clean a brush it's gonna take way longer to clean a sponge and to get up inside the sponge with soap and water and then you know, you might not be able to have access to that. So that's just another tip I wanted to throw in there. Now let's move on to actually applying makeup onto the faces. Now I wanted to do like a separate video on this because um, I did this with my sister when I did her makeup. I was definitely like double dipping. I used my mascara on her. That was different because it was my sister. I don't care about sharing makeup with her, but you don't want to do that when you're doing it on clients. They can get pink eye, they can get styes, they can get an infection, they can get meningitis, like anything can happen. When it comes to foundation, say for example, um, if you don't have a pump or if you have like a foundation with a doe foot like the makeup revolution foundation what I do is I like to work off the back of my hand you can work off of a metal tray I have one I never find myself reaching for it my best tool when I'm working are my hands so I'll take something like a liquid foundation this is my foundation the Maybelline fit me and instead of like putting my finger on it like this and you know shaking it up and then applying it on the client's face because I use my hands a lot when I'm working with clients oh that's another thing don't be afraid to use your hands as long as you sanitize I should have probably said this in the beginning I did not say this but when you're working on clients you always want to make sure your hands are clean so if you're going to a location where again you might not be able to just kind of like navigate your way around. If people come to me, I'll always make sure I go and wash my hands. It's the last thing I do before I'm about to touch their face. If I'm on location somewhere, I make sure to have an abundance of hand sanitizer. You always want to make sure your hands are clean. I keep this on the very, very top of my kit, so it's the first thing I see as soon as I open up my kit. I have hundreds of these. I always make sure that my hands are clean, I sanitize, I do like a nice, good little amount. I like, baby, we go in. We're not trying to give anybody any diseases. Go down your arms, get in between my wedding rings. I do my nails. I just make sure everything is nice and clean. We want everything to be sanitary and you want your client to know that you take their um, health seriously. I mean, I know it sounds kind of dramatic, but you don't want to go into doing makeup like with your client thinking that you're dirty and you're gross. Like nobody wants that. They're not going to hire you again. Word of mouth is very strong. You know, they could go to somebody else and be like, oh, this bitch is nasty. She didn't even clean her brushes, sanitize her hands, nothing. So you want to make sure that you're sanit sanitizing your hands. I make it a point to do it in front of my client. I want them to see that I care about being clean and I care about them having sanitized sanitary clean products that I'm working with and it, it's important to me. So I didn't mention that at the beginning, make sure you're sanitizing your hands. So then what I'll do is for something like this, like this doesn't have a pump, right? Instead of sticking my finger on here and kind of shaking it and dotting it onto their face because again, I use my hands for everything. You've already touched their face. They have oils, bacteria. Everybody has germs, right? So instead of like dotting it on the face and then going back into this and doing that again, now whatever you've touched on their face went back into your bottle. If this is like your foundation that you use sometimes, if you use it on other people, now you have all that person's germs in here. So I always take something like this, whether it's a squeeze tube, a doe foot, a pump, anything. I always work on the back of my hand and I'll just take a little just like that and I work just like that right off my hand. Then I'll take my hand and kind of dab it on their face or I'll take my sponge and I'll dab it on their face. But you always want to make sure that your hands are clean when you're dipping into products and that you're not like cross contaminating anything. Now I almost always bake everybody's faces when I'm working on them. So what I'll do, say for example, here's my pretty vulgar palette. I'll just tap a little bit 
in the lid just like that and instead of taking my sponge and working from this where all the powder is and all the product is I'll work from the back of this lid you just want to do a little by little because you don't want to waste any product that you don't have to and then when you're done you can just take your alcohol and just spritz the top of the lid so everything's nice and clean. You wanna do the same thing with concealer. This is just a random concealer I have in my kit. Instead of going in and applying it underneath the eye and then dipping back in here, you wanna work off of the back of your hand. Now this can be kind of annoying because concealer wands are not always big and juicy like the Tarte Shape Tape. Sometimes you have a little one like this. This is the next one. Love this concealer, but I hate the applicator sometimes. It only disperses a little bit of product. Like I feel like you have to go in multiple times, but instead of doing that and going underneath the eye and then dipping back in and cross contaminating, you wanna take this and either work with it on a palette or work with it on the back of your hand. So you just wanna do that until you get a nice decent amount. And then you can do the same thing. You can take your finger, dab it under the eye, take a brush and swipe it under the eye and blend it out with a sponge however you uh, want to blend it in I love to use dip brow on people that's just one of my favorites instead of going in there with the brush like I normally would for myself I'll either use a little spatula I don't know where mine is at the moment but what you can do instead of that is you can take the back of your tweezers just like this and just go in and kind of pull a little something out on the back of the tweezer and then put it on the back of your hand and you can work off of the back of your hand. Same thing for eyeliner, gel liners. What I'll do for brow pencils, this is a dirty one that I used on my girl over the weekend. I'll just put it up all the way. I'll take my alcohol and I'll like coat the shit out of this brow pencil. And then I'll take a little paper towel, I'll take this towel sometimes, and I'll kind of make sure to kind of rub it off. I'll also spray the inside of the lid. You can also take a little Q-tip, stick this just inside the lid of the cap. Again, this is like, kind of overly cautious, but I'd just rather be like extra sanitary than under sanitary. Just clean that out. And then I'll even put down the brow was like I'll put it down all the way and I'll spray inside and then I'll kind of just rub it off on the towel just to make sure that everything's nice and clean. I do the same thing with eyeliners and lip liners. Now I know some lip liners and eyeliners are retractable. My kit, I actually prefer the ones that I can sharpen because I feel like it just keeps it a little bit cleaner. Line the lips, do the eyeliner, do whatever you have to do. And then when I'm cleaning this, I'll go ahead and spray it. Then I go in and sharpen it. I'm not gonna sharpen it a lot because this is actually already clean. I'll go in and sharpen it and get that top layer off and then I'll actually spray it one more time. Just again, to be on the safe side. And then I also do that with eyeliners as well. I know a lot of people apply lipstick straight from the tube because you can kind of clean this off and sanitize it, but I could just never get behind that. I've seen them do it at MAC and to me, I'm just like, Ugh. That's still kind of gross to me. I don't know, maybe it's just me. But what I do is I'll take my little spatula, something like this, the back of a tweezer, and I'll actually just scrape off like the very top of it. And I do the same thing. I work from the back of my hand. I did like the world's tiniest scoop ever. Instead of um, applying this on the lips and having to spray it with alcohol and wipe it down and spray it again and like potentially damaging your lipstick from cleaning it and wiping it, I just rather work off the back of my hand and then you can take a lip brush. I actually just started using these. These are a freaking game changer, I will tell you. I got them on Amazon. I'll link them below along with anything else that I'm talking if I can um, find it online and if I remember, I'll make sure to link it below. But these little like disposable uh, lipstick wands, these are seriously gonna change your life. I personally don't like lip brushes. Um, for me, I just feel like they're kind of hard to use on people. I came across these on Amazon and I was like, let me go ahead and try them out. I used them for the first time recently and they literally changed my life. For mascara, you wanna make sure that you're using disposable spoolies. These mascara wands are not the best as these, but I don't think I've ever done somebody's makeup where I haven't applied lashes on them. So it really doesn't matter about the wand to begin with because you're not really using the wand to like make the lashes super full. I'm just using it to do a base coat for my lashes. So I buy these disposable mascara wands. You can get like 200 for under 10 bucks I think. These are not the best for like doing like a mascara look. Like if somebody just wants mascara, you're gonna have to use like 50 of these to really build up the mascara because they're not like, you know, 
that great of a wand. Chances are if you're hired to do makeup for somebody, they're probably going to want lashes anyways. And I find that for the bottom lashes, since you know people don't really like 50 million coats of mascara on their bottom lashes, the majority of people don't, that I've ever done at least, they work just fine. Sometimes I'll use like four, five wands per person. You always want to make sure that you're going in with a clean mascara wand and then you just throw those away when you're done with them. Now let's talk about how to sanitize your palettes. This was something that just kind of occurred to me randomly where I was thinking, well, what if I'm using a palette? Like for example, I used the Sultry palette on my client over this weekend. So here's the Sultry palette and I was thinking, you know, what if I'm using a palette and then the next person that I use, I want to use that palette too. From taking your brush and dipping in and then putting it on the client's eye and then dipping it again, obviously there's germs that go from the brush to the eye to the palette. This kind of seemed like to me a very like duh thing but I never saw anybody talk about like this way of sanitizing your palettes but this is what I've always done I kind of thought about how when you break an eyeshadow or you break a blush and you use alcohol to help kind of like mend it since it'll fix my blush why can't I use it to sanitize my palette so I always make sure to sanitize my palettes again like look I've only done this video, this was full when I started. I'm already like almost halfway through. So I do go through a lot of alcohol when I'm cleaning and sanitizing in between. I should have probably gotten a bigger bottle because I literally go through so much of this, but I don't have a bigger bottle. But the way that I sanitize my palettes is I just take the alcohol spray and I just spritz over the top just to make sure everything is nice and clean and sanitized. We don't want any germs. I used this on my girl over the weekend. This is a Maybelline highlighter. I'm gonna do the same thing. And then I just leave them open so uh, the alcohol dries up. It doesn't damage your palettes. It doesn't alter the way that your eyeshadows work or anything like that. Everything just stays nice and clean and it gets sanitized and you don't have to worry about like germs. Sometimes when you apply lashes on a client, especially if it's somebody where they've never worn lashes before, they're not used to wearing lashes, um, it's poking their eye, maybe it's too long, you need to trim it more, and you've already put the lash on the strip and apply it, I want to just mention very quickly how I go in and reapply the lash if I've taken it off to readjust it or I take it off because I need to trim it because I think this is important because natural instincts, like for me, when my lash is uncomfortable and I'm like, oh, let me take it off and reapply it. I just go in with my glue and reapply it right to the lash. You can't do that when you're working on somebody else because you've already applied it to the eye. And if for whatever reason it's too long, it's not comfortable, you have to take it off and redo it. Sometimes the glue doesn't stick and you just need to put more glue on. You wanna make sure that you're not taking your brush and dipping it back onto the lash band and then dipping it back in here because that's obviously cross-contamination. This is where my spatula comes in handy. I just found it right now. It was hiding under something in my kit. I will actually take my lash glue and I'll put it on this end of the spatula. It's like the pointy side. It's kind of like a little triangle at the top. I'll use this to apply to the lash that's already, it has germs on it already from being on the eye. And then I'll go in and reapply the lash and then I'll just wipe this off or clean this off or sanitize it if I have to use it again to dip into something else. But the nice thing about the spatula is it has two ends. So you can use this to scoop out your product from your gel liners, dip brow, whatever. And then if you're in a situation where like you need, you're in a tricky situation and you need the other end of the spatula, you have this to do something like that. I wanted to go ahead and mention that because I find more times than none where you just sometimes have to reapply the lash. Lashes are kind of tricky. They look beautiful, but they can really be a bitch sometimes. I think the only thing I didn't mention is obviously when you're applying gloss and stuff like that, you want to do the same thing, kind of work off the back of your hand. And I think that's pretty much it. If I missed something, go ahead and let me know below. If you have any questions you want to ask me, let me know below. Um, anything you want to see, if you guys want to see like any other type of makeup artist uh, video, anything like that, just go ahead and let me know. I'd be more than happy to film it. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really so hope that it was helpful for those of you just starting out or maybe you just, you want to start freelancing and you don't know what to do. I really hope that this helped you guys out as much as possible. I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. Make sure you subscribe before you go. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And I think that's all I have to say. Thank you guys again so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!